Welcome fellow wine lovers, this is the Wine Ghost Podcast. I'm Mate Vosh, a certified sommelier and seeker of hidden stories behind the most mysterious drink in history. For more information or direct contact, please look for the Wine Ghosts on Instagram and Facebook. But now, please grab a glass, get comfortable and listen to how the day's ghosts get out of the bottle. Miss Stein, another unique face in the Balaton Upland series, Istvan Bence. He explains why he decided to leave his successful IT career behind and establish his family-owned vineyard on the St. George Hill. Just some fragments from our eye-opening conversation. Why biodynamic winemaking is different and pulls you out of your comfort zone. How the Toscan way of living inspired Istvan. Introduction to old Hungarian grape varieties, the Pocators, that almost got extinct and how to make stable natural wines and how to learn to enjoy them. He mentioned energy a lot while explaining the philosophy behind the estate's zodiac labelings. So I hope some good energy will come through your speakers too. Embrace it. Thank you very much for the welcoming and I'm looking forward to this conversation. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you for coming. I'm fine. How are these days going in the, in the winery? Or which, which stage are you? Which which uh, actions do you take maybe in the vineyard now because uh, as i know you live here in the in the here right yeah 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 i'm i live here uh, in the vineyard in a other house so we are uh, in the murci now which is a wine bar in from from easter till end of october mm-hmm. uh, so in the high season and uh, now it's it's uh, silent <laughs> But outside, uh, we are doing now the pruning in the vineyards. Especially, we started the uh, uh, work in uh, in uh, the Rhine Riesling and the Kirchnerl. Mm-hmm. Because you have, I think, a very interesting history also with the winemaking and also how you moved here as a to this quiet place and silent place. I live here since uh, twelve. Exactly, it's uh, January of uh, 13, mm-hmm. but uh, I moved here end of 12, but uh, I started this estate uh, at 11 mm-hmm. uh, with a very small uh, plot, which was 0.3 hectares, and it was here around us, mm-hmm. and this building where we, we are talking now, um, so we started to build it uh, in, uh, in 12, beginning of 12. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I say we, uh, it means uh, me and my family, and especially me and my father. Uh, I'm from the east part of uh, Hungary, from Debrecen. So I was born in Debrecen and uh, I, I went to university in Debrecen also. And after the university, uh, I went to, to Budapest, mm-hmm. to, to where, where I had my first job in uh, IT. Because I was studied as a programming mathematician, and then I worked as a system um, integrator and a Java developer. The first time I met uh, with uh, wine and uh, wine culture, uh, of course, it was uh, when I, I bought some bottles from from the shop, mm-hmm. and I started with the uh, red wines from Billai. And I every every evening when we did something, I mean uh, some dinner mm-hmm. at home, uh, we I just bought some bottles, some Cabernet Sauvignon, some uh, Merlot, and mm-hmm. so on, and I just started to to taste them, and mm-hmm. it was very interesting for me because before when I was a uh, younger. Uh, men uh, in party time we always drank beer mm-hmm. so we haven't uh, we couldn't drink a good wine so it was always the beer for us and sometimes spirits of course and then uh, probably during my first job the first years uh, in budapest i just uh, started to taste some wines and uh, these were cheaper wines from teleki mm-hmm. And, but uh, they were they were really enjoy enjoyable wines at that mm-hmm. time for mm-hmm. me, so I really liked them. And then I started to uh, buy 
more bottles and more different types and some light. As, as I remember my first uh, uh, white wine, which I really liked, was uh, Tricolis from mm -hmm. Panohamia Pache. Mm -hmm. I really liked to buy it. It was cheap and uh, for deep. Um, so um, comparing to other, other uh, wines in the shop, it was cheap and really good quality for me. And then uh, I uh, moved uh, to Florence, uh, to Italy, for one year. Because Be of a job? or No, because of my ex-girlfriend who, mm -hmm. who studied uh, interior design there for one year. And I just uh, joined her and, uh, and the lifestyle was very interesting for me because it was very different mm -hmm. from the Hungarian kind of living. Uh, there, I just felt that uh, people can enjoy the life more easily. They can do things what they like more, uh, more easily because they don't care about the opinion of other people, for example. Mm -hmm. And of course, I started to drink coffee uh, there before I, I haven't. And I started to cook mm -hmm. because I found uh, amazing markets there, amazing ingredients. Uh, every time I went to the market, which was very close to us, it was amazing. I mean, uh, very fresh fruits, very fresh uh, uh, mushrooms, meats, uh, amazing stuff. So, and of course, fish. Mm -hmm. So I could uh, easily buy a lot of in ingredients and I could easily cook something very good. And so, you also tasted wines there? Yeah, yeah, of course. I started to buy from the shop mm -hmm. uh, at the first time. And then after some months, I started to visit. Uh, wineries in Tuscany, mm -hmm. but I didn't really, I didn't uh, understood uh, these kind of wines at that mm -hmm. stage. And uh, I just uh, bought some uh, Chianti, mm -hmm. um, I bought some super Tuscan uh, wines and then some whites, of course, and I could taste a lot of different wines. What I realized uh, the first time comparing to the quality, they are cheap. So you can buy like for five euros, very, very good wine, mm -hmm. white wine, for example. I just realized that uh, I have to think about my lifestyle at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I come back, I started to rethink everything uh, which, which was um, around me. So my job, my goal, what I want to do, mm -hmm. uh, when, when I will be like 45 years old, what I want to, want to be. I started to think about a lot of things mm -hmm. and uh, especially I started to getting closer to my 30, 30th birthday. Mm -hmm. So, and, and in this time, I think uh, the man <laughs> started to think about uh, the future mm -hmm. and the life because before you are young and you feel you can live forever mm -hmm. and you can do everything what you want mm -hmm. in your lifetime, but you just uh, start to think about, okay, I'm 30. Uh, if you double it, it's 60. So <laughs> it's very close to the <laughs> to the end. So you start to think about what to do. Making together this uh, lot of thoughts uh, in me, I started to think about uh, doing something else than uh, IT, mm -hmm. which is uh, more close to the human being, not being in the four wall in, mm -hmm. inside a, a room, mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, it's very comfortable and it's air conditioned and uh, you meet uh, a lot of uh, people of course but uh, in front of the computer as a software developer it's a different lifestyle than you meet a lot of people and of course i i was a and that in that time i was a kind of little boss of a small team mm -hmm. And I had my own company. I started to work for other companies, uh, making solutions for mm -hmm. um, telecommunication, mm -hmm. to the bank field, uh, and so on. But somehow I felt that I don't want to continue. I don't want to be a kind of uh, company owner to have more, uh, more guys uh, for working me and uh, making more uh, projects and uh, having, earning more money. Money, of course, is very important, uh, but uh, I just felt I'm, I'm, I'm bored doing the same every time. So we just uh, did a project, it was finished, and I felt we are very comfortable, we are uh, dependent to the technology, mm -hmm. but we are 
starting to be very far from the nature mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted something uh, which is more close to nature. I, I just started to uh, feel that I have to do something different to be in nature like uh, hiking or mm -hmm. making something in, uh, outside in a village or something. So, mm -hmm. But I didn't know what... Uh, but that's uh, very interesting because what you, what you told this, my impression is that Toscan not only opened your palate, but also somehow your mind, right? Yeah. And gave a new purpose to you and maybe new thinking and opened maybe other dimensions or other dimensions in, in your life. And that's what I actually see always when I look at your label. They have a very interesting label. You will find them in, on Instagram. And when I look at it, you could maybe never tell that it's a wine label other than written maybe the grape variety like Pinot Noir or Chenimont. I always see thoughts and maybe dilemmas. The, the first reason or the first uh, thought what I have about the labels, it's always a, like a man on a journey or a man on a, on a quest which is not maybe coming directly from wine, but maybe it's also a journey of someone who is turning back to nature or somehow looking for something new. I don't know if, <laughs> if that's all right. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> nice, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, something like that, idea. yeah. You know, um, when I started to think about it at the first time, I just uh, felt that I don't find uh, creativity mm -hmm. in my life, so in my, in my work. And uh, I started to, to make, uh, when we had a new project, I started to make the uh, design Mm -hmm. as well but mm -hmm. I haven't been a design a designer before mm -hmm. but I really wanted to something to draw or something to mm -hmm. make the user interface mm -hmm. for for one application to to have something uh, creativity mm -hmm. in my work because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it was very boring and I think it's very important uh, in case of the winemaking as well uh, creativity is coming from the nature mm -hmm. Uh, at the first time I didn't know, but uh, I started to work uh, work on this uh, project and I just realized after some years that uh, these all things coming from, from nature. And you also have zodiac signs, I know there are star signs on the labels. What is the reason behind that? Yeah, um, the idea uh, of using uh, this kind of constellation signs of the labels was uh, to to show somehow uh, the harvest date of the wine on the label without um, writing the exact date mm -hmm. because uh, we started uh, to work biodynamic uh, since uh, 2014. We started to use uh, the moon calendar mm -hmm. and the moon calendar is full of uh, this kind of uh, zodiac uh, signs which is very important because uh, so every every day uh, you have effect from the cosmos uh, which is uh, originated from some constellation and you know we have the four elements so in the moon calendar you can find the four elements uh, the fire air uh, water and uh, earth every constellation has its own uh, element and uh, when you do anything in the vineyard or in the cellar on a given day, uh, this uh, effect uh, coming from the cos cosmic uh, mm -hmm. space, your vine and your and the soil and the plant will have uh, a plus effect from that from them. And where did you heard of these ideas first, or where did you read about biodynamic viticulture and biodynamic agriculture first? At the first time, I I. Uh, tasted uh, some French uh, mm -hmm. biodynamic wines in the line. Uh, it was sometimes a blind tasting, and I always loved uh, the wine, which was from uh, biodynamic farming. Mm -hmm. And I just realized, okay, it's something interesting. It should be something uh, which which uh, can give some plus uh, for the wine. But I didn't understand what is it. So I started to uh, read about it, uh, books. Of course, I started a, a very nice book uh, from Nicolas Jolie. Mm -hmm. Nicolas Jolie is a very good uh, writer, but uh, you cannot uh, find any um, useful tips uh, when mm -hmm. you want to, 
to start uh, working like this, but it's very good start to to see it uh, a little bit more globally. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I started to read uh, Steiner. It's also it's not an uh, easy reading, so I didn't understand anything about it. I started to visit uh, wineries from 13 uh, in in France, mm-hmm. uh, Italy, and Slovenia. And I started to understand some elements of biodynamics uh, with them. The first time, as I remember, when I started to really understand how it, how it work, how it's working, uh, when I visited uh, Atzi Urbais in uh, Slovenia. Uh-huh. He's a Demeter certified biodynamic uh, wine grower. He's very small in Rifnik, so it's the center of uh, Slovenia. So it's not so far from here, like uh, three and a half hours from uh-huh. here. And we started in that time a good conversation. Every year I visit uh, him twice or, or once at least. And we always continue this uh, con- con- conversation. This was the first time when I started to understand uh, when we talk like two hours about biodynamic, how he works in the vineyard, how he works in the cellar and what is important what, and what, what's not important. And, and if, what, is imp- what is important, if I may ask, like a cross question, like mm-hmm. how would you maybe distinguish after doing or cultivating your vineyards uh, in this way? What would you say that the, this impression was at the tastings, what you already felt, but you may already know? What, what makes the difference for biodynamic wines? So why did you already find those wines more appealing in the past? So it's, um, I think it's very easy if, if you read a lot of books and you talk a lot of people and you taste a lot and you just mm. think and think, uh, walk in your vineyards, it's very important. So the main, main thing is uh, the soil life. So the practice, mm-hmm. the practic, uh, practical side of, of uh, biodynamics mm-hmm. is the soil life because your soil contains a lot of uh, microbiological elements, creatures, and uh, for example, bacteria and yeasts and a lot of uh, things which are very sensitive uh, to the cosmic effect and everything around uh, this globe. So for example, the most important thing is uh, the moon, the movement of the moon, and of course the sun. And if you think about the tidal, I mean the ocean, Mm -hmm. the moving of the ocean, uh, you can uh, understand that the moon and the sun have a lot of effects on a lot of things in in this planet. And uh, in the soil, uh, the life of these uh, bacteria and uh, yeast very depending uh, to this kind of uh, uh, moving uh, mm-hmm. so the moon especially it's very mm-hmm. important the closeness of the moon if if the moon is moon is more close mm-hmm. the uh, effect i mean the force the gravity of the moon is more strong mm-hmm. and uh, these kind of uh, very very small creatures are very sensitive for it if you have a uh, good soil life, I mean reach of these kind of creatures uh, in the soil, you will have a more healthy soil and you will have a more healthy plant. If you have a more healthy plant, you will have a more more complete uh, juice, which uh, is a very good ingredient to cook. If you don't have good ingredients, when you cook a soup, it's, mm-hmm. it, it won't be a good soup. You can, you can put salt, you can put uh, spices, of course, a lot. Mm-hmm. and hide the real mm-hmm. taste of the ingredient because it's not good mm-hmm. because it's uh, not from a good uh, from mm-hmm. a health uh, agriculture mm-hmm. you can have a soup of course but it's, yeah. it's it's not the same when you feel the the real taste of the ingredients and uh, it's mm-hmm. healthy okay. so the main main thing in biodynamics is the soil life and uh, through this soil life you can uh, have a more balanced uh, juice, more balanced ingredients. Of course, there is an anthroposophy uh, side of uh, biodynamics, mm-hmm. which is very important when you would like to fine tune, uh, understand uh, more deeply behavior of nature. For example, you have some disease and you don't understand why it's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very good to to have a kind of view, which is very different view. Uh, if you compare to the technology side view of uh, the 21st century, mm-hmm. the first thing is when you have something problem, you go to the shop to buy it. Yeah. 
a solution mm. and you buy the solution you spray it mm. and okay it's okay i can go to hawaii to, to mm -hmm. uh, relax a little bit because i solve it mm -hmm. but i don't care about the nature the behavior of the nature mm. i just believe in in this solution and i pay for it and that's all mm -hmm. by the weeks about using nature to uh, to heal itself kind of right? yeah if you already talked a lot about the terroir can you maybe introduce your exact terroir because here we are on the St. George here, and it's uh, also not the first podcast from here, so maybe where are your single plots located and why, why are they different too? Uh, our plots are located on, only on the south side mainly. Uh, we have uh, three plots only. Mm -hmm. uh, all are in the St. George hedge, so this hill. Mm -hmm. These are uh, bigger plots. So the smaller one is here, mm -hmm. where we are talking now. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is uh, one and a half hectare big. Mm -hmm. Other, which is our so-called uh, Grand Cru, mm -hmm. uh, it's in the um, Temple on Dombi uh, Dulu, which you can translate Chapel Hill plot. It's higher, it's almost uh, 280 meters from the sea level, and we have also uh, 300. And this is a bigger one, it's a uh, 10 hectare uh, together, it's an uh, advantage as well. And we have another big one, which is a little bit down, it's from 130 meters, which is very low, it's up to 180. So the top part of the, of the Orpinonire is uh, around 180 or 90, I don't know exactly, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's a little bit lower uh, part and uh, the soil here is more fat, mm -hmm. it contains more clay, mm -hmm. uh, less rocks. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, uh, because of the erodation of uh, the rocks, uh, mm -hmm. the basalt and other kind of things, the rain can uh, and all the water can uh, give from the top uh, the minerality mm -hmm. to down to the valley and collects mm -hmm. in the valleys because of the erodation. Mm -hmm. But here you, can, you cannot find big rocks. Uh, but you can find a lot of clay, which is good for red vines, and uh, you can find um, sandstone mm -hmm. in the deep. Um, and it's a cooler uh, plot here in, on lower elevation also, or you cannot really feel the temperature? It's temperature not cooler also. because... Uh, so we, ha we have less wind here, mm -hmm. because it's between two uh, hills and mm -hmm. we have a valley, uh, which is uh, a little bit closed mm -hmm. and uh, it's south phased mm -hmm. and sometimes it's very hot here uh, upper parts mm -hmm. um, we have mo much more wind and mm -hmm. it's uh, a little bit more cool uh, place so if if the spring frost uh, come uh, here in uh, Rokol Rokoluki uh, Dulu which is the name of this place mm -hmm. uh, which the, lower is part. the lower part uh, the spring frost, frost uh, can come uh, and uh, can uh, make uh, big damage. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, upstairs, in the Chapel Hill mm -hmm. uh, plot, that's why it's a Grand Cru. It's mm -hmm. a very good uh, place, so we don't have uh, any frost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also see, because we look at actually the map of the vineyards, which I am also going to post, at least on Instagram, and you can see that the upper part, like this called the Templum Dulu or the Grand Cru, as mm -hmm. I like you mentioned, I only see white varieties, right? Right there is the Karchlöwe and Furmint, and on the lower side, almost all of them are red varieties, as you mentioned, right? Yeah, it's for us, uh, for me, it's very important uh, the white range, mm -hmm. and uh, I prefer making whites. I, I feel more close to the white grapes a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, I I also like uh, Pinot Noir as well and uh, the the red grapes, but. Um, for us, uh, the whites are more uh, important. The personality of, of this uh, plot is, uh, I think, it's more close to, to the white white grapes, mm -hmm. and uh, you can we can we can show more easily the minerality mm -hmm. uh, uh, with with white grapes. Yeah, and why do you think it is that the, maybe the Balaton uplands and uh, especially this hill is focusing more on white varieties and most producers feel more comfortable with white varieties and not red. It's a very interesting thing. I think uh, when uh, phylloxera came in the past, 
the vine growers, the farmers uh, decided to plant uh, white grapes, probably uh, because of economic decisions. Mm -hmm. Probably they could uh, sell the white wine more easily. I don't know. I really don't know. Before and uh, if you if you check the the documents and the old newspapers, uh, you can find that uh, we had a lot of red grapes here before. I feel that and uh, also Chabotorok from uh, the two H A uh, winery also uh, says that uh, in the age of the Roman Empire, the Romans uh, planted more uh, red grapes here mm -hmm. than the white. And uh, traditionally, it was more a red grape area before. Mm -hmm. So it's really due to the phylloxera and also the Second World War. And, the yeah, and before phylloxera, it started to uh, change. Mm -hmm. So it was before phylloxera, mm -hmm. but uh, after phylloxera, people uh, planted uh, mainly whites. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, really, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the answer. Because that's that's the question actually I always had when I came here and when I started to taste these wines from the Balatan uplands. Okay, I really like Olas Riesling and I really like cake, you know, I like white wines, but I also like red meat. So I, I want to I want to have some bolder red ones. And I know volcanic places where really bold and meat-friendly uh, red wines could also come. Taurasi or Sicily or just mm -hmm. to mention some few, few Italian yeah. uh, places where, where you may uh, know even better. and. I think the climate is not so different than than this one here because it's also almost sub-Mediterranean yeah. kind of, right? So do you, would you say that it's more historic reasons and not uh, agricultural reasons? Yeah, I mm. think so. Mm. I'm, I'm really sure. Because and now we see that uh, a lot of times red grapes works better than whites. Mm -hmm. And I plant uh, traditional uh, white grapes like cake nero. Mm -hmm and Furmint uh, also, and Hashevelu, and Rhine Riesling, which was uh, here before uh, Welsh Riesling. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel sometimes that uh, red grapes could be could uh, express more uh, this terroir, uh, and uh, we could find more balanced wines in, in red mm -hmm. style, because in uh, red grapes you can find more more different varieties, which are uh, late li ripening yeah. uh, varieties. Probably they could be better in, uh, for these hot, hot uh, summers and hot Septembers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, the decision of uh, planting uh, Sangiovese uh, of uh, uh, Chabotorok was a genius, I think. Of course, a lot of people don't like this decision and, mm -hmm. and they just say, why did why do you plant red grapes and why do you plant an Italian one? But mm. I think it's a very logical uh, decision. And I think uh, some, uh, some uh, vine growers here in this uh, wine region will decide uh, in the next 10 or 20 years to plant uh, yeah, right. uh, red grapes like Shiraz or uh, not Cabernet Sauvignon, I think, because uh, Cabernet Sauvignon needs, I think, a little bit different uh, uh, circumstances, mm -hmm. but uh, lightweight tannins uh, like uh, what we had before. I mean, old uh, Hungarian grapes like Hoynos cake, mm -hmm. what we plant, and cake bakator, mm -hmm. what we will plant now a bigger uh, surface uh, would be uh, the best uh, choice because you can show the terroir. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a lot of tannins, it's not easy to work with, with them. You will feel... Uh, kind of covers the... the yeah, terroir it will hide, yeah. hide mm -hmm. the, the real terroir, I mm -hmm. think. But uh, of course, you can make, uh, be able to understand the differences between uh, two different terroir with a lot of tannins as well. I think the, the world goes in that direction and the gastronomy goes that direction and also you can feel more easily the taste of the terror if you have less tannins, mm -hmm. a little bit less color, color mm -hmm. but uh, in red. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you already mentioned cake pakator and pirosh pakator. Uh, can you maybe introduce the listeners to these varieties? Because uh, I myself never heard of these ones before tasting or finding your wines. Yeah, um, these are very old varieties. Uh, these are the part of and members of uh, the old Hungarian grape families. 
So there, there are a family of Bakator, which uh, contains uh, Fehér Bakator, Piros Bakator, Tüdőszínű Bakator, and also Kék Bakator. Mm -hmm. Fehér means white, uh, Piros means red, Tüdőszínű means a kind of uh, between red and purple. We have another one, which called, uh, which is called uh, Kék Bakator, uh, where the cake means blue. Uh, so these are different colors and uh, you may think that uh, it's a kind of family like uh, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Grigio mm -hmm. and Pinot Noir, but it's not that, unfortunately. So Fehér, it's not uh, not the relative of uh, Piros, Tudőszínű and Cake. And also Cake is not relative of uh, Fehér, Piros and Tudőszínű. The only relatives are mm -hmm. uh, Piros and Tudőszínű together. Okay. They are different... Uh, color um, um, varieties mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of uh, the same genetical uh, Bakator variety re results and we don't know anything about them because mm -hmm. uh, the previous system uh, removed every, every knowledge from the families who had this kind of uh, grape varieties mainly uh, in Transylvania and mainly on the east side of uh, the Carpathian Basin. Mm -hmm. But also in Tokai, also here we had uh, different types of Bakator, mm -hmm. but mainly Pirosh. Mm -hmm. And we know another thing which is very important. Uh, a new genetical research is, uh, showed that uh, cake Bakator, which is the blue one, mm -hmm. is uh, somehow a half sibling of uh, Glera, mm -hmm. which is the Prosecco variety yeah. of uh, Italy. <laughs> so, and uh, I tasted also in Venice uh, Glera wines and the natural mm -hmm. types of, also, mm -hmm. and uh, I felt a lot of uh, aromatic uh, similarity, so. but uh, Cake Bakator is also the member of the old Hungarian uh, grape uh, family, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important. I mean, it's close to the Scharfehér and uh, somehow close to Furmint. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy to tell in, in words, this tree, yeah. and uh, we need more, more researches to, to, to find uh, mm -hmm. relatives. And do these colors refer to the grape on the wine or more to the wine which is already red? The grape, the grape. Uh, of course, the grape. So mm -hmm. the color of the grape. Mm -hmm. So fehér white is, is really, really white. Mm -hmm. um, Piroche is like... Um, Gabriel Traminer, mm -hmm. a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. and it's a kind of uh, shade of uh, magenta, mm -hmm. which is uh, a little bit uh, interesting to see in, mm -hmm. in a vineyard. Very, very nice color. Mm -hmm. um, Tudor is a little bit darker. It's kind of uh, Pinot Grigio mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. And Cake Bacator is the has the color of uh, Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. In some years, uh, it's more light. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the wine. Mm -hmm. In some years, it's a little bit the same color than Pinot Noir, so less, a little bit less uh, colors and less tannins mm -hmm. than Pinot. Mm -hmm. It has. And in terms of um, aromatics, would you say that this because you mentioned Gewürztraminer, it's a very aromatic variety with a bunch of terpenes. How, in terms of uh, aromas, how would you describe these varieties? I mean, the wines. In in aromas, fehér, um, so the white. One and the blue one is the more the most neutral. Mm -hmm. So, but they have a very different aromatic profile than the any other mm -hmm. uh, Hungarian grape and any other French grape. Uh, so you you cannot compare uh, this this profile. And um, more intensive is uh, the Piroche and Tudosinu, mm -hmm. and mainly the Piroche. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, some uh, hours on skin before pressing, you will have a very nice uh, mm, intensity of aromatics, but it's not like Gewürztraminer, it's like Verschlüssling, uh -huh. okay. so it's not more, okay. really. And cake bakator can be very neutral, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important for me, uh, for this estate, because uh, it can really reflect uh, the terroir very, uh, with very neutral uh, aromatic profile, mm -hmm. and you can very clearly see and understand the terroir mm -hmm. here. But you make still wines from these varieties or yeah, of you course. make sparkling? I'm, I, make, uh, I made a sparkling wine in 13, mm -hmm. I, I mean Cake Bogator. Yeah. 
and uh, in 15, 17, and also in 19, I made uh, steel, okay. steel light, and my first thread is from 19. Okay. So it's in the in the cellar now. Beautiful. And how is this vintage actually? We are already talking about wines. 19. Yeah. 19 is, was amazing for us. We had uh, big difficulties in the uh, in the vineyard. And uh, the May was uh, very, very cold mm -hmm. and uh, we had a lot of rain in mm -hmm. May and after in two days it was hot summer uh -huh. and it was very, very dangerous uh, regarding to the Dani Mildu. We could uh, solve uh, uh, with uh, some preparations, I mean uh, the silica, so we could solve somehow and, uh, and then uh, we had a kind of amazing uh, autumn with very cold uh, mm -hmm. temperature. I mean, but not very cold, but uh, perfect. Because uh, before, like during the last uh, four years, we had very hot September. So we, when we harvested the grape and we had to stop at 10 o'clock and uh, in the morning. And at 10 o'clock, it was like 35 uh, degrees of the temperature of the grape, mm -hmm. what we took to the cellar. So we had to cool down mm -hmm. and next, uh, morning we could press it so now and we had a very nice balanced autumn finally mm -hmm. and at the harvesting do you also you are kind of allowed to use these kind of agencies like uh, dry ice and things like this just to cool down the grapes or what because you don't use uh, sulfur right to stop the fermentation yeah, yeah. we harvest so we are, we are many mm -hmm. uh, lot of old ladies mm -hmm. And we harvest more and uh, less quantity. Mm -hmm. We we try to harvest only what we can uh, process mm -hmm. in the cellar in good conditions. Because if the if the grape is hot, uh, you will have different conditions. So you will need uh, sulfites. But we we try to open the berries like when it's uh, sixty degrees, mm -hmm. so very cold. Mm -hmm. Or, or maximum 80 and uh, we, we are not allowed to probably we, we could somehow use a dried ice I think uh, probably Demeter can allow mm -hmm. I mean the certification mm -hmm. organ uh, company uh, but I don't need it so mm -hmm. I think it's a kind of it's it's a good tool if unnecessary you, if you do the it's harvest. really unnecessary mm -hmm. so if you if you can uh, so sometimes uh, i feel that technology can uh, make the people blind a little bit and uh, natural wine is like jumping in in the dark without safety net so but if you have the knowledge if you if you're always thinking about uh, uh, how to solve things with the uh, cheap tools mm -hmm. like basket pipe mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. you can you can solve it really but mm -hmm. you have to sit down and think about it a little bit and think about why am i doing this so finding mm -hmm. your always uh, and and seeing your your steps mm -hmm. in the cellar why why am i doing this why i i i use this timber why i use uh, pumps because i started to use pumps as well okay. but at at one point i just uh, thinking about okay but we have two floors so why why and by gravity it can close yeah. down mm -hmm. and why why we use pumps because it's more comfortable of course yeah. mm -hmm. at the first time but then if you used to the other things used to the tool of gravity uh, and you always think about how to solve mm -hmm. it's you will it will be comfortable as well mm -hmm. so it's it's very important when you feel that okay I'm ready, I'm fine, I arrived, I can make wine, I, okay, to start again, think about, okay, mm. why am I doing this, every mm. step, mm. and uh, I think dried ice is, but dry ice is not necessary, you can buy it, of course, you can use it, it's yeah. very nice, but. So would you maybe say that biodynamic uh, viticulture keeps your mind also fresh, kind yeah. of, right? It's very, I think it's very important in these days that, to see that uh, solutions, so technology, is business and mm. everything around us and around organic uh, viticulture and wine making mm. also business and around biodynamics also mm. because you can buy 
very nice uh, preparations. You can buy uh, ingredients for teas, and also mm. you, you, you have to buy this Muganda, mm. and you have to. Mm. No, uh, Biodynamix is free, really. Mm. So it's very important to a little bit think about uh, and to be in, independent because Steiner always uh, uh, stated that the most important uh, around uh, agriculture and biodynamic agriculture is the personality of the farm being and uh, it's a unique being and you have to be independent. Mm -hmm. You have to do everything in-house mm -hmm. uh, with your hands. And when I look at the varieties, it, um, I also see like very old varieties, what you already mentioned, for example, Cake Bocator, but I also see Chenin Blanc, mm -hmm. and I also see Rhein Riesling, and I also see Harsh Levely. So it's... Uh, yeah, a lot of varieties. It's a very colorful vineyard, so to say. Some of them are Hungarian, and some of them are German, some of them are French. The, where does really the Benza brand uh, stand with these varieties and with these plants? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For me, uh, I planted Chenin Blanc because I'm a fan of Loire. So mm -hmm. it was very important for me to have some, a few, but now I have 0 0.6 hectares. So it's a little bit bigger than few, of course. Um, yeah, it's too many, too many variety, I feel. But uh, this is the beginning of, so the first 15 years of the estate is about finding ourselves. Mm. We started making classic wine. We, we made a lot of uh, sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. Nowadays uh, we don't do, but my plan is to make something, so not a big quantity of sparkling, mm -hmm. but in natural way, so I'm fine, I'm filtered without sulfites, mm -hmm. metal traditional. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also have steel whites, steel full bodied uh, or skin contact whites, and, and also lightweight red, uh, for example, Pinot and and we bought uh, the Pinot Noir vineyard with uh, Cabernet Sauvignon planted mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. uh, by the uh, uh, previous owner, uh, Huba Seremley. So I bought vineyards and I started to work with uh, Pinot Noir, Cabernet mm -hmm. Sauvignon and Ryan Riesling. Mm -hmm. This was the first step. I planted Chenin Blanc mm -hmm. and now if I could uh, decide again, I wouldn't plant Chenin Blanc, of course, mm -hmm. or not so many. Mm -hmm. But I really love Chenin Blanc, I really love the acidity, uh -huh. uh, the character. You don't have to spray it with, mm -hmm. uh, with um, for example, copper. You don't mm -hmm. have to use copper. It's so resilient? That no, it's not resilient, but it's somehow somehow, it's, it's not sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we work uh, biodynamic. I mean, uh, we use the preparation and we also make the compost. And the soil is getting better and better, so it's very strong. Mm -hmm. Uh, the soil and probably it can help uh, for Chenin Blanc to protect uh, itself. But um, but somehow it's not sensitive here in the in this slope. And uh, you always have good acidity. You don't have high alcohol, so it's, it's and very how, comfortable. And how would you maybe compare it to a lower Chenin Blanc? Could you maybe yeah. reach that kind of level that you wanted with Chenin here? I think so. Mm -hmm. I'm really when I started, I felt. Uh, ah, okay, it's probably won't be the best one. Uh -huh. Probably for me, it, it will be good, or we can sell here in the estate uh -huh. for a basic wine. Uh -huh. uh, but now I feel that uh, if the wine wines are getting older and the vineyard is getting older uh -huh. year by year, I I feel more deepness and more deepness in acidity uh -huh. and uh, in in layers in the wine. It's very interesting. And uh, no, I, I learned that if you have a young vineyard, you cannot, so it's not easy to make natural wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not easy to make a basic wine. Why is that? It's, I think um, you need at least 10 or 15 years to have a kind of um, developed root system to, to have that kind of pH and acidity in the wine. I don't know why, but I, I, I'm really sure now about it. When I work uh, in case of the, I work with the Rhine Riesling planted in 1976, it's very easy. I just, mm -hmm. we've just pressed it, put to the, some, something mm -hmm. and it ferment, it always dry and always very good wine. So you mm -hmm. don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. You, we wait two years on the lease and we just bottle it without sulfites now and. Two years? Two mm -hmm. years on the lease, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, it's um, and or at least one and a half. But two mm -hmm. years is very good to feel two season in the cellar also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to have. I mean the a little bit, of, a little bit of heat of the spring okay. uh, can affect the cellar. We we cool the cellar of course with the geothermic mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. so it's uh, all the year it's very cold. But somehow it's uh, the effects from outside mm -hmm. and the cosmic effects also. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important for the microbiological life of the yeast and the wine because uh, uh, it can stabilize stabilize it. Mm -hmm. And it will be clean, and you can put to the bottle. You can bottle it, and uh, if you have only a half bottle, it can stay two, two weeks or three weeks in the fridge. It won't be oxidized, so no, nothing, no. because of the yeast and mm -hmm. the two years on the lease, and also because of the ingredient from a very balanced vineyard. It's mm -hmm. very important, and the energetic. Uh, side of, of the fruit mm -hmm. is very important. It's coming from the soil mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Uh, the, so I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about natural vines, what I already heard from other people, that they believe that these vines would not be so stable and they, they are not able to produce a stable quality. Yeah, it's depending on the vine. It's not uh, because of its natural vine. Mm -hmm. It's because of the steps and the knowledge of the wine grower mm -hmm. and the philosophy of the wine grower. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, you can uh, find natural wine, which is uh, which uh, is good when you open it, and after after like a day, it's okay. I think it's very important uh, in case of a natural wine mm -hmm. when you open it, uh, it should be good till you drink it, and it's also very important to see that uh, the drinkability of natural wines are more so more on more higher um, level mm -hmm. you can more easily drink like water or like uh, fruit juice apple juice uh, uh, natural wine without so effects mm -hmm. so usually when you open a one bottle 075 in a small family or or small um, group uh, it will finish in in one or two hours but it's very important for me that the natural wine should be uh, stable at least one day. But uh, sometimes you can find some bottles which is good for two hours and then you, uh, mousiness comes mm -hmm. Im immediately. Mm -hmm. Different uh, type of mousiness you can feel. Mm -hmm. It's a mysterious thing and it's a wine fault, of course. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's... Uh... Chata. Because we also have a really nice Hungarian dog here at the also in the room, and it's uh, how is the life here in the vineyard with the dog? Does it help in the <laughs> yeah? It's <in> the cutting. <laughs> yeah, he helps uh, to mulch, uh, to 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 make uh, smaller uh, pieces of uh, the wine shoots mm -hmm. now, and also helps uh, at harvest time to eat the fruit, mm -hmm. but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it's very important to have uh, a dog, I think, uh, because dog is more part of the nature and uh, it can feel more um, subtle uh, uh, moments, mm -hmm. what you cannot uh, understand and you cannot uh, realize. Mm -hmm. For example, you work in a vineyard and it's very uh, silent, you cannot hear anything and he starts to uh, recognize something very, very... Uh, very silent uh, mm -hmm. noise mm -hmm. and it's very important to have have him to mm -hmm. uh, to realize these uh, small happenings so he's like a more sensitive radar yeah yeah yeah, the, the yeah. and always uh, when we have a long tasting in mm -hmm. the night <laughs> mm -hmm. he come uh, at after one point he come after 10 o'clock or half past uh, nine he come and, and starting to uh, disturbing me yeah. To, to stop it, to stop, <laughs> to stop it, and, and come with me to sleep, uh -huh. Uh -huh. because he he has the kind of uh, feeling of team. Uh -huh. We are a team, and uh, mm -hmm. we have to sleep we because to. tomorrow we have to work. Uh -huh. So he's very kind. He always think about me. I think. So come coming back to the natural wine. For me, uh, the main point is to have uh, very stable natural wines, and I think 
uh, in the world of natural wine now um, there are a lot of noise I mean a lot of wine growers abroad uh, want, want uh, make now uh, natural wine because it's very trendy you can sell natural wine more easily mm -hmm. and it's a kind of trend and uh, we want everybody says now that we want to make pet nut we want mm -hmm. to make uh, other things, but the problem is immediately they start to make uh, natural wine. So in the first time they uh, they are not able to make because they don't have the the ingredient for it mm -hmm. because uh, the fruit. So they make uh, conventional uh, farming, mm -hmm. and the fruit has a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So you need healthy, organic, at least organically yeah, produced full of ingredients, yeah. and full of energy. Yeah, to... and the energy comes when you uh, use biodynamic practices only, and mm -hmm. after three years at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. And I think the best is uh, after seven years mm -hmm. or, or more. Mm -hmm. Before you have to use sulfites or fining and clarifying the wine. If there are listeners who don't really know how natural wine is made, how would you maybe explain it to them? Why is it different? Yeah, the definition for for me is uh, uh, natural wine is a living wine, uh, which is from at least organic uh, farming, preferred uh, when it's uh, certified organic. Mm -hmm. So you have a kind of paper mm -hmm. you do with this, and very important that uh, it is your vineyard. You don't buy the grape, mm -hmm. or if you buy the grape, at least uh, the wine grower have has to have a certification uh -huh. and uh, of course biodynamic uh, own, owned uh, vineyard is the best the second point is uh, you don't add anything and the third point is uh, you don't remove anything See, you refer to fining by the yeah, moment uh -huh. yeah fining filtering uh -huh. you don't remove anything from the wine uh -huh. and you don't add anything uh, to the wine, mm -hmm. which means uh, neither stool fights, uh, but before bottling, at the last step, when you make the cuvee, mm -hmm. what you want to bottle, mm -hmm. you can add some stool fights, like 10 or 15 milligrams per liter, which is almost uh, before yeah. bottling. And uh, my definition is contains a kind of uh, limit, which uh, shows that um, you have to be under 30 milligrams per liter sulfites mm -hmm. added or 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 from the, uh, mm -hmm. from the fermentation doesn't matter mm -hmm. but it's very important uh, to be under uh, 30 milli uh, milligrams per liter because if you have more uh, of course you add it or or in it's from the vineyard mm -hmm. uh, so you spray it to to many sulfites there mm -hmm. it will change the wine really but you refer to sulfur dioxide yes so you will have um, different aromatics because of the presence of sulfites mm -hmm. mm -hmm. especially you add uh, in the cellar mm -hmm. you in in that point you will stop the life uh, mm -hmm. in the wine mm -hmm. and the natural uh, development of the wine in the cellar so it's mm -hmm. if you add sulfites it's not important to leave on the yeast uh, or on the fine leaves mm -hmm. uh, for years because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter it mm -hmm. will be that uh, almost that uh, yeah uh -huh. yeah so very important uh, that point is um, before bottling right before the bottling you have mm -hmm. you can add mm -hmm. if you want really but just for stabilization yeah mm -hmm. yeah if you feel that uh, somehow the uh, reductive oxidative uh, mm -hmm. balance of the wine is not okay mm -hmm. because and I think it's before because uh, you don't something you made a mistake somewhere mm -hmm. in the vineyard or or mm -hmm. during the steps mm -hmm. uh, especially the processing I think mm -hmm. probably used pumps and mm -hmm. uh, with skin mm -hmm. you pumped it and uh, it's too aggressive and a lot of uh, kind of bad tannins mm -hmm. coming uh, to the wine Mm -hmm. which will uh, destroy the balance, uh, this kind of reductive oxidative uh, balance of the wine. Mm -hmm. and so you also make uh, orange wines? Yeah, I have some, I don't call orange okay. uh, because it's not important for me. So I don't want to have a kind of uh, 
marketing uh, uh, advantage mm-hmm. because I, I I think for me it's not a skin con for me it's not orange wine but it's a kind of tool of having more extraction from the skin and mm-hmm. from the, from the grape mm-hmm. and not from the terroir but from the grape mm-hmm. and probably sometimes from the, from the terroir but you have to find that balance mm-hmm. so it's it's about extraction it's like uh, when you make a uh, black tea mm-hmm. and you just forget the filter in the cup mm-hmm. for half hour mm-hmm. and you cannot drink it mm-hmm. and the time for how long you you leave mm-hmm. uh, the, this filter is the very important thing it's a kind of stool it's a kind of tool mm-hmm. so it's a kind of uh, the part of your wine making uh, style mm-hmm. but uh, i i use uh, some part uh, skin contact to have more more body or more structure more mm-hmm. structure maybe mm-hmm. more tiny structure mm-hmm. it's only a tool so it's i don't co- call and, it and nature. don't you think or i heard from other wine makers that making long skin content wines so to say not orange wines but long skin content uh, wines may uh, cover or hide the terroir my opinion is uh, that it doesn't hide the terroir but you didn't learn to taste in this world the terroir mm-hmm. because if you just check the world of red wines and of course if you see burgundy a lot of pinot noirs and you you can you can taste uh, premier cruise and grand cruise and mm. you can uh, feel the difference between and also the, not only the intensity and energy energetic uh, side but also the the profile i mean the personality of the terra you can feel mm. immediately of course pinot noir is a more more elegant uh, uh, grape but also in cabernet sauvignon you mm. can do the same mm. or barolo mm-hmm. i think it's a uh, it's a bullshit but you have to have uh, skin contact wines from every plot mm-hmm. and you have to taste a lot of times them mm-hmm. and then after some years you will understand the differences between mm-hmm. uh, in, in this world between the plots mm-hmm. also but it's is this is the same uh, in the world of classic wines you mm-hmm. add sulfites mm-hmm. and you change really uh, the wine mm-hmm. And also the terroir. Now a lot of papers, papers, uh, so rich research papers, that if you add sulfites uh, before malolactic fermentation mm-hmm. to to avoid malolactic fermentation, and also more before uh, at the pr- uh, process, mm-hmm. the sulfite will uh, make uh, so will be together other other molecules and mm-hmm. other materials in the wine, mm-hmm. and it will result a kind of so-called terroir. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, aromatic uh, ar- aromas in mm-hmm. the wine and everybody and uh, and also the wine professionals think that it's a kind of uh, sign of terroir in the wine if you feel rocky rocky uh, aromatic profile mm-hmm. but it's not that mm-hmm. and the researchers now say that it's uh, because of you add sulfites if you don't add it won't mm-hmm. uh, develop in the wine so I think um, when we learned uh, to taste the different plots and different terroirs in the world of uh, classic wines, you um, and now we can understand every plot. If you go to natural wine or if you go to the world of orange wine, you have to re relearn everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there. Mm. And I don't believe in it. Of course, if you have too many tannins it can disturb you to, mm. to see that kind of uh, um, signs or, or the character of the terroir. I agree, but... What you also refer to in terms of tannins, you can also find it in acidity if you try a lot of Rieslings, for example, or if you try a lot of Cakenier, or I don't know which, which yes. grape variety should I refer to. So I think you have to kind of train also not your palate, but also your mind and then you can you can identify this so I, I i totally agree that these do not hide the terroir but you just have to adjust yourself and your tasting and maybe also your brain to, yeah, to find yeah. the differences and, and sometimes you will feel the difference of two terroir mm-hmm. in the acidity mm-hmm. not not the aromatic profile but the acidity mm-hmm. the style of the acidity mm-hmm. uh, the structure of the acidities 
it's very important for us and also I think that in 10 means you can you can find differences between two terroirs mm -hmm. but yes it's not easy you have mm -hmm. to taste a lot and somehow at the end what is the aim what is the aim I think uh, sometimes it's um, it's mystified mm -hmm. too too mystified this plot that mm -hmm. plot it's mm -hmm. wrong mm -hmm. oh, wow and come on what is what is the wine for? It's for for drinking, yeah. for to, to to drink, to enjoy. But oh. you also experience in Tuscany, right? To to complement a beautiful life, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And also because going back maybe to Tuscany, uh, a lot of people call this region or this micro region, the Balton Uplands, uh, the Hungarian Tuscany. I could see why, maybe just looking out of the window. But you also have a little taverna like. Um, Bistro or a restaurant or I don't know how to it's call it. It's a kind it. of wine bar. Wine bar. Mainly wine bar. Yeah, it's not. That's kind. called Murci, right? Yeah, Murci. And what's what's the aim of that? And what? How should listeners or maybe future wine tourists imagine this place? And why should they come here? <laughs> Murci. Uh, if you want to translate the name, uh, Murci is an old Hungarian word, meaning the fermenting juice especially in that stage when it's a little bit more sweet, mm -hmm. but also has alcohol. And uh, also, also you can feel something from, from the place, from the origin, and, but, but mainly you feel the grape variety and, and sweet, and a lot of CO2 in it, mm -hmm. and it's funky, but good to drink. Uh, so this is Murci, uh, the meaning. Usually you can uh, drink Murci when it's November, so after harvest. Mm -hmm. After harvest, like, uh, I mean, two weeks after the harvest. I remember that uh, I'm, I'm come from uh, the Bretzen, but both of my grandfathers had a vineyard there. And uh, in, in that time we always uh, drank uh, Murci. And the children uh, can drink also because it mm -hmm. doesn't have, have too much alcohol. So... Uh, coming back to the wine bar, uh, I I decided to choose this name because we wanted something uh, not common, not uh, a basic wine bar, but a kind of place of for people who are interested uh, in uh, natural wine or or main, mainly wine. Mm -hmm. It's a place of talking, and of course you can eat also. But uh, here you can find uh, sometimes very good music, mainly analog music. So we use uh, the vinyl player uh, and uh, every second week, uh, weekend, we have uh, some DJ or some live music here. So it's a kind of meeting point, uh, wannabe meeting point. Uh, my, my goal uh, with this wine bar is uh, to show uh, for this region or for the country uh, that um, natural wine exists also because here uh, nobody knows and nobody understands what is uh, natural wine at this moment but uh, in the young generation I, I can feel that there will be more uh, mm -hmm. wine growers who, who will follow these uh, uh, steps which is in abroad mainly in Fr France mm -hmm. uh, and also in Italy and also in the Nordic uh, region, it's very important now. So, mm -hmm. if you go to a good place uh, with good kitchen, you find only natural wine there, and uh, nothing else. Uh, so the world somehow changed in the last uh, 10, 15 years abroad, but in Hungary, we don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of mission for me to show this ki these kind of wines, and that's why I started to import some uh, wine, some wines of uh, some of my friends and uh, very great uh, natural wine growers uh, from France, uh, Italy and also Germany and Austria mm -hmm. and uh, to show for the Hungarian gastronomy also so we, in Budapest uh, we, we sell a little bit, not too many mm -hmm. so it's a small, small mm -hmm. company just to show and uh, uh, I mean to teach uh, other wine growers it's possible. At, at, it's possible and at least you can uh, they can taste here mm -hmm. so a lot of times they come here mm -hmm. uh, from the country and uh, from this country and um, I can show them a lot of uh, nice videos so far which are very stable and mm -hmm. amazing energy 
and very nice. So it's, I think it's very important now uh, for, for Hungary to, and the wine growers here to, to understand that uh, there is, what is the state of the art of winemaking in the world. Mm -hmm. Because here inside we think that we can do something with Furmint, we can do something with uh, Asu. Mm -hmm. Of course, also it's an amazing uh, thing. So it's uh, the the highest quality and the highest uh, point of wine making. But uh, anyway, uh, wine growers doesn't doesn't see this world. And uh, for me, when I started to see uh, these differences between Hungary and abroad, it was very important to show the others. And uh, a lot of times uh, they just told me that, oh, come on, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very expensive and my wine is better, I don't want to taste it, I, I, I know it's better, my, my wine is... Mm. And uh, I want to sell my... It's, a, it's my favorite uh, sentence from some wine growers here. I, I will sell it uh, for 50 euros, uh, showing uh, his wine. I will sell it, it's, it's, uh, it's a very good wine. And, okay, and I show uh, him... Uh, I showed him like uh, five different uh, wines, mm -hmm. which for me more quality, higher quality and uh, more mm -hmm. deepness, mm -hmm. more potential, and they were uh, under uh, 25 euros, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, and he said, okay, okay, probably I don't know. So it's very important now for Hungary, I think, to mm -hmm. understand what's coming, what's uh, what's outside mm -hmm. of the country. Uh, and it's not, it's not, I'm not saying that because I want everybody to make natural wine. Uh -huh. I don't really care. I don't want to change anybody. Uh -huh. It's my uh, way. I, I cannot do anything else because I feel that uh, it will be strange for me if I work by the week in the vineyard. Why, why I should uh, be classic uh, winemaker in the cellar. So, uh -huh. so it's not logical. But... Uh, and, and of course, that's, I think, very important uh, to have classic wines, very good quality classic, classic wines. I mm -hmm. really, sometimes I drink uh, classic, so it's uh, not a bad thing, I think. These are parallel uh, words. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the problem is uh, we don't know anything about the world. But it's a globalist world, so we have internet and so on, but we don't read, we, uh, we don't taste. Mm -hmm. We should taste a lot, a lot of wines. You don't have to pay a lot of money for them. You just, you have to probably travel uh, a little bit and uh, go to the tastings. And just develop the, the feeling maybe also not to adjust your taste, but also just to appreciate yeah. others, right? Yeah, yeah. And maybe you can learn something from them, but at least know about yeah, yeah. other things. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I actually pretty much learned about the world of wine that it's not only about you you are making the best wine and you are making uh, you are having this variety and this is the best and this is the the kind of grape variety because you come from Hungary and or you come from Badacho and you have to drink Olas Riesling and you have to drink Fröch and you have to drink red wines only from Eger and from Villain and you have to drink sweet wine only from Tokai because I think that's kind of a sickness of Hungary as well that we have 22 wine regions and you can have a really good white wines also from from volcanic regions and also from other really hot regions uh, from the Kunshag maybe and also from from Shoprom maybe but you can have also bold red wines and also very light-skinned, uh, very aromatic Pinot Noir, also from volcanic regions, also from Matra. So you can have basically everything from within the country. And maybe we are not, or most winemakers are not forced to look out of the window, so to say. And I, I think that's kind of the sickness of, of having so much wine styles within. Yeah. I don't know how do you see it, but that's kind of my... Yeah, I agree. I really agree. And the plus, I think, very important, the ego mm. thing, which is the end of the development of wine yeah. making. I mean, the quality. If you feel that, okay, I'm good, I make a very good quality, I have the right uh, variety, I can sell it. This is the really end of the development. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. 
Istvan, thank you very much for the conversation. Thank you too. Okay. And really good thoughts and I think a lot of uh, takeaways. And thank you very much and good luck with your... Thank you for the questions and and I hope you come back uh, in the season to check Murti. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.